Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Steven Roth and I'm a board certified oral and maxillofacial pathologist. Today we have our latest installment in my essential differential series, the three P's of the bumps on the gum. But first, we have to get into that disclaimer, and that is that all of the opinions expressed in this video are mine and mine alone, and do not represent any organization that may employ me or that I may belong to, and that this video is for educational purposes only and should not serve as medical advice. Should you have any questions or concerns about your oral or systemic health, please see your nearest oral or systemic health care provider. And with that being said, let's get into today's video. Bumps on the gum are not uncommon findings on a routine intraoral exam. To best remember the differential diagnosis, we can remember the three P's, which I'll be reviewing in this video. Some oral pathologists have variations on this memory device, such as four P's, or three P's and an F, or three P's and an M, and I'll be covering these as well. The first of our three P's is the pyogenic granuloma. The pyogenic granuloma is a collection of granulation tissue with a vascular proliferation that forms a tumor-like bump. This vascular proliferation causes the pyogenic granuloma, or PG, to bleed very easily. Unlike the other two Ps that we'll discuss, the PG can be found on any surface of the body, though the gingiva is the most common location intraorally by far. There is some evidence that poor hygiene or gingival irritation may lead to these lesions as a part of a reactive or inflammatory process. Additionally, you may know the PG as the pregnancy tumor. That's because PGs can occur in the second or third trimester of pregnancy, though I need to emphasize that they are often seen in patients that aren't pregnant. So I would stay away from calling these pregnancy tumors or telling someone that they're pregnant just because they have one of these. If the PG is related to pregnancy, the vast majority of these patients are already well aware that they are pregnant at the time of clinical presentation. This is a case of a PG that I've come across. It did happen to be related to pregnancy, this patient had just delivered a baby the day before. Sometimes pregnancy-related PGs can shrink or fibrose after pregnancy and may even spontaneously regress entirely, but this patient didn't want to wait and preferred that this lesion be removed. This was the patient's second child and she had a PG on the opposite side of the mandibular arch with her first child. We removed this PG for the patient and you can appreciate the vascularity of this lesion in addition to the spindled granulation tissue. The second P is the peripheral ossifying fibroma. The peripheral ossifying fibroma occurs exclusively on the gingiva. The peripheral ossifying fibroma, or POF, usually occurs in younger patients in their teens or early adulthood with a peak age between 10 and 20. The vast majority of POFs occur in females, and more than half of them occur in the anterior region of the jaws. This case occurred in a young woman in her 20s. The excisional biopsy from this case showed the classic spindled stroma, which is very commonly seen in these lesions, in addition to droplets of calcified material. A POF doesn't need to have a significant amount of bone, even the smallest bit of calcification will do though cases with well-developed bony trabeculae like this one can occur. I've been using the abbreviation POF to describe this lesion. It's important to remember that the O in POF stands for ossifying, not adonogenic. A peripheral adonogenic fibroma is a different, less common entity, and the two should not be confused. The third P is the peripheral giant cell granuloma. Like the peripheral ossifying fibroma, the peripheral giant cell granuloma occurs exclusively on the gingiva. It's important to make sure that this lesion is truly peripheral, meaning there's no involvement within the bone. Peripheral giant cell granulomas, or PGCGs, can cup out or saucerize underlying bone, but shouldn't be blatantly radiolucent. If a lesion looks like a PGCG on the gums, but there's an underlying radiolucency, it's more likely an extension of a central giant cell granuloma from within the bone into the soft tissue. It can be difficult to fully assess whether a giant cell lesion is peripheral or central. The histology of a PGCG is also identical to a central giant cell granuloma in that it consists of chocolate chip cookie-like giant cells and a spindled stroma with extravasated red blood cells. Usually when in the peripheral tissues, these biopsies also include the surface. 
Like their central counterpart, the PGCG may be related to hyperparathyroidism, and these peripheral brown tumors do occur, but much less frequently than brown tumors of hyperparathyroidism within the bone. A reminder, these brown tumors of hyperparathyroidism look exactly like giant cell lesions under the microscope. Here's a case of a peripheral giant cell granuloma in a young boy with the corresponding histology that shows the previously described spindle cell bloody background, giant cells, and ulcerated surface mucosa. Ulcers are quite common on these lesions as they're very big and in the way of the patient's normal chewing. It makes sense that over time they'd become traumatized. Treatment of these lesions are all the same, excision. It's important to remove the entirety of each of these lesions, so I often use a curette to make sure that I've removed all of the tissue between the teeth to minimize recurrence. I always discuss the risk of a periodontal defect in addition to recurrence when excising them. There's about a 15% recurrence rate for all of these entities. One common variation of the 3P differential is adding a fourth P, or by saying three P's and an F. This additional differential is a fibroma, or if you want to use the P, a plain old fibroma. Fibromas are the most common tumor of the oral cavity, though they're likely not really tumors, but rather reactive in nature. Fibromas occur in areas of trauma, like the buccal mucosa and lips. There is a suggestion that fibromas on the gingiva represent a long-standing pyogenic granuloma that's undergone fibrosis, but that's up for debate. Giant cell fibromas, not to be confused with giant cell granulomas or plain old fibromas, are quite frequently seen on the gingiva, especially as retrocuspid papilla, which occur on the lingual gingiva of the mandibular canine in young patients. Giant cell fibromas are a unique lesion and have a specific histologic presentation, which includes stellate or star-shaped multinucleate fibroblasts within the stroma. Another common and important addition is the M. So three Ps and an M, where the M stands for metastatic lesion. Metastasis to the soft tissues of the oral cavity are not very common and represent only about 1% of all oral cancers. If they are present, more than half of the time they present on the gingiva. Unfortunately, metastasis to the oral cavity is a late sign and often has a poor prognosis. Not only that, but about 25% of the time, the oral metastatic lesion is the first presentation of the cancer. This case was an asymptomatic bump on the gum of a middle-aged woman. This woman had a history of known breast cancer, but the three Ps certainly do belong on the differential diagnosis. One subtle difference was the periapical radiograph, which showed extensive bone loss in the area, which would be pretty uncommon for the other Ps in the differential. Biopsy of this lesion showed nests of epithelioid cells with many atypical mitotic figures readily identified on higher power. Immunohistochemical stains confirmed that this lesion was in fact a metastatic deposit that matched the patient's known breast cancer. Some oral pathologists include peripheral adonogenic fibroma, which I alluded to earlier, or peripheral adonogenic neoplasms, but these are encountered so uncommonly that I'd prefer to keep it simple with the other more common lesions. There you have it, the differential diagnosis for the bump on the gums, the three Ps, or if you prefer, the four Ps, or three Ps and an M. Be sure to check out my other essential differential videos, which I've put in a convenient playlist. And while you're at it, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks again for watching and be well.